Hey guys, happy Friday. Today is Friday, uh, February 1st. I almost messed it up. Finally, February, January 74th. Felt like it lasted for 74 full days. I am with my friend, Curtis Lucy, who's here. Uh, we are in the Grand Bohemian today, so shout out to the Grand Bohemian for allowing us to do the show live. Let us know you can hear us and see us. Again, hey Brandy, this is a new place. We're probably having to scream, and if I'm screaming too much, uh, let me know, or if you can't hear us, let me know. But give me a thumbs up. Obviously, I could hear us, because I just heard uh, Curtis's phone, which is good. Welcome, my friend. Awesome. I'm happy to be here. I'm so happy. It's already a month into the year. I can't it's believe it's a month first. into the year, although I really do feel like January lasted forever. <laughs> uh, so I'm very happy for February to be here. So much going on in February. But we've been trying to get together, 100% my fault and schedule, for a long time. Uh, and so I'm excited to have you on the show. I'm excited for you to talk about all the things that we just pre-planned and talked about. But you have, a, you have a great story. You have a lot of trajectories. You have a lot of things that you've done. Uh, so we want to hear it. So welcome. Thank you. All right, so give them a little, they always like to hear your origin story. Give them a little background on who you are, where you're from, and then maybe how you got to that turning point. Oh, okay, you got it. Well, I've only been here in Orlando for a few years. I grew up in upstate New York. What's uh, upstate? Define. Okay, so not like Westchester County. It's, uh, it's Real upstate. upstate. Yeah, so between New York City and <laughs> Montreal, right in the middle, right above Albany. Wow, that so is upstate. It was upstate more cows and people in my neighborhood. <laughs> baseball was a passion of mine. It led me into college in Connecticut, played uh, Division One baseball at Sacred Heart University. I didn't know Fairfield. you played baseball. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't do any, re we, we always joke that the R&D goes to um, whatever's in my mug at the time, so we don't have any money for R&D, so I learn it just, just like you guys learn it. And so what, what made you give up baseball? Oh, no, it's just, I just realized that there's a lot of talent out there and baseball was not in my future to go on pro. Of course, that was my dream as, as a kid. Because you've probably put in many, many years of practice and games and weekends and things like that. Yeah. And so what did you do after college? Well, so actually, well, I was in college was my first kind of little entrepreneurial type of endeavor. It was a network marketing company that had to do a long distance telephone service and I got started and I paid my tuition my last three semesters of college um, with that. My dad, had anybody done anything network marketing in your family? No. Or was that just an opportunity that came to you and it was a natural fit? So I wanted to stay in school. My dad calls me and said we had too many loans outstanding as a family. And there was three of us in college and I had a sister as a senior in high school. There was four of us total. And he said, I don't know what we're going to do. I can't coast. I can't get another student loan. So I played baseball. I was an RA on campus, a resident assistant. I was a full-time student, obviously. Worked the basketball games and football games to try to get a little extra money. And it just fit into me because they th told me, like, listen, you can work around your hectic schedule, make some extra money. And so I got started for, like, 700 bucks. And I hustled and uh, was able to make it work. So you had the personality. Because I think a lot of people get into network marketing. It used to be called MLM, multi-level yeah. marketing, yeah. right? So network marketing sounds much better. <laughs> uh, total entrepreneur, that's right. Hey, happy Friday to you. GP Piz. <laughs> Uh, she's awesome. Talk about an entrepreneur. Uh, but I think people get into network marketing and they think it's going to be easier than it is. Uh, they think that you're going to not have to do a whole bunch of work and everybody's just going to love your product and you don't have to do anything but sit there and collect checks. So how was that reality for you? Uh, geez, yeah, it was definitely quite a learning curve. And it wasn't really the money that I made when I was in college that was the most important. It was really the relationships that I built and it was the personal development that I gained going to weekend seminars and all that stuff. But really it was the confidence. Like it was when I started having a little success and I started going to the the seminars, it allowed me to land a job that I probably wouldn't have been able to land right out of college. And there's a guy that came to a career fair. I didn't want a job. And he sold me and it, on the opportunity. And I was, I got to sell really sexy products like toilet paper and air <laughs> fresheners and soaps. I worked for a Cintas right out of college up in- Cinta. yeah, that's yeah. office supplies, right? Something like um, that, no? No, it's more like, uh, you know, uniforms, aprons, towels, they yes. launder the stuff and they drop it back off. So I sold to a lot of bars, restaurants, that kind of stuff up in New Haven, Connecticut area. 
and did you like it? Did you enjoy you know, it? It was the culture. It was the person that I worked for that made it fun. Right. And that makes I a just, huge difference. And it was really channeling everything. It was going. You know, otherwise I would have continued doing the network marketing business, but unfortunately, long distance telephone service became free. And <laughs> people don't remember those days but it's before not really cell phones and everything was long distance was included. If you're in a business where the product or service eventually comes free, that's not really good for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's not going to make it for you. And so yeah, when I was in Synthouse, I just had laser focus. I just like focused in and I, I cut out, I didn't play baseball anymore. I was just focusing on that and it did very well and was one of the, actually came number one out of 1,250 reps in the country. Wow. And I hustled, but it, it, was a, it was a quote that I learned when I was in college at a seminar from Jim Rohn. You know Jim, Jim Rohn, Rohn yes. He's uh did he have a column or no on TV? What's Jim? Jim sports guy, sports guy. No, that's no? Uh, Jim Rohn was actually Tony Robbins' mentor. Ah, oh, And so he's a personal development guy, and there was a, a CD that I listened to, and he says, what you lack in skill, you can make up in numbers. What you lack in, so what I, I didn't know what I didn't know, and I just went out there, and I made more phone calls, I knocked on more doors than right. everybody else, and I just was, as a result, I just was Where successful. did you get that? drive to do that. Hey Chris, what's up Chris? Uh, where did you get the drive to do that? Where did you, did, were your, were your parents um, entrepreneurial like that? Uh, because you can be entrepreneurial and not enjoy that kind of sales. Right. So how was that? Did it just come natural to you or did you grow up in an environment where that was kind of the norm? I grew up as, as competitive, you know, played competitive sports. I played uh, on a travel baseball team that was, was awesome. I traveled around the country and played a lot of baseball. And, you know, I just think that when you surround yourself with really good people that want to lift you up and want you to be successful, Absolutely. I believed them. And when they told me, you're going to do great, I believed it. And so I went out there and uh, I did exactly what they said. I mean, success leaves clues. So this guy that was uh, a sales manager, his name is John Cohen, and, and he just says, here's the blueprint. Do this, this, and this, and you're probably and you're going to get this. And that's what I did. But I realized it's not that not everybody does that. <laughs> so that's so. a great point. So a lot of times, the people who are successful will give you the actual blueprint, mm -hmm. but people want to find their way of doing it, and then they don't follow the blueprint. They don't they don't do the exact st steps that that person did. They try to tweak it on their own. And then they go, well, I, that didn't work for me. Well, it didn't work for you because you didn't follow the formula. And I think a lot of people make that mistake when they're getting in. People ask me all the time, you know, how did you, how do you get, how did you get to be where you're at? Um, I don't know. Other than insanity, uh, I could tell you and share with you, but you have to follow the exact same thing. It's very, people are complicated. You're right, Chris. All right. So what did you do after Cintas? So I was, while I was at Cintas, I. I had network marketing in my mind, like leverage, uh, residual, you know, like income. And so a couple of years later, I went to a seminar. It was all about, and I, the seminar, the guy who started, founded the company, it was a company called Send Out Cards. And this founder had his, uh, his brother passed away. And I had a personal experience because a week after I graduated college, my brother Silas was killed in a freak dirt bike accident. Sorry. And so it was just synergy. And I said, you know, I want to do that. So, um, my, my mentor in college, actually, the one that was a top income earner in that other uh, network marketing company, he, I couldn't wait to get started, and he didn't want to start all over again. And we became partners. We are 19 years apart, and we became business partners. Wow. And we then traveled. And send out cards. And send out cards, yeah. We built a team of 13,000 people. We got wow. to the top of that company. Out of 150,000 distributors, it was four of us that got to the top. And it was, it was a nice run. And you know, there's, unfortunately, the, the hard reality in network marketing business is that you don't actually own your own business. You, right. It says that you do, however, you, do. There, you know, there's terms and conditions and all that stuff to protect the company. And what's the, what's the time frame? Like, I, you're right, I think there's, there seems to be always an expiration date on network marketing. But if you're building up, Send Out Cards was a great company. You would, you could, I believe you could go online and it would yeah. create this beautiful card for you. It was very much about, touching your, your database, your clients, your referral sources. But what, what happens at that point? Because I think people look at somebody like you and 13,000, they're like, well, why did you ever leave it? Yeah, well, I mean, unfortunately, there was some comp plan changes and there's some different things that were happening. And, and you know, really what I, what I wanted to do is, so my, my business partner, Tommy, and I, we wrote a book uh, called Appreciation Marketing, How to Achieve Greatness Through Gratitude. So while we were traveling the country, we became international trainers. I spent six months in, in Australia doing a book tour down there. And it, while I was traveling around, and 
before we just realized that all the stuff we were teaching, appreciation and gratitude, all it seems like common sense, it's not common practice. Correct. So the average person, they don't, they're not intentional about building, strengthening and creating relationships. And, and that's, I wrap up all my seminars saying that I believe the best investment we can make in life is in relationships. Because relationships are the real currency. When you boil it all down, it's so true. you could lose everything, and then yes. you have those relationships that are pulling for you. Right, it doesn't it doesn't matter. You can be back up on top in no time. So before we, I want to get, I want to dive more into appreciation marketing. How did you go from network marketing and then began to do presentations? Did uh, how did you get into the uh, speaking series, the speaking um, world? Because I think a lot of people feel like they have a message. A lot of people feel like they could get up and speak. Uh, but you actually made a livelihood out of it. You, you, were you always a great speaker in front of people, or is that something you had to learn as you went? I joined a BNI um, back in 2007, 2000, yeah, 2006, 2007, and the first time I stood up and gave my 60 second commercial, <laughs> my mouth was cotton mouth. I, I sat down and I looked around the room because I completely blanked. I had no clue what I just <laughs> said, and I thought I might have said something. All of a sudden. It's like, no, every, they're just going about their business. So I'm like, I must have said something that didn't embarrass myself. And then it, that led to a few months later, I'm on stage in front of you know, 500 people and then 1,000 and then 4,000. And you know, it, was, it was a lot of fun, but really I had a lot, to, a lot of credit with my business partner, Tommy. Um, he traveled around the world and spoke and he's such an amazing speaker. And, and so he really coached me and kind of helped me along. And, the biggest thing was the authenticity and, and being genuine. And when you speak from your heart, you can't ever you know, say the wrong thing. Well, I think with us, I love the whole speaking thing, but I think people are afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that whole stat, I don't know if it's still true, that people are more afraid of public speaking than death. Uh, and I think people don't understand that you can be speaking in front of one or 5,000, and once you get used to it, it doesn't matter how many people you're speaking in front of. If your message is authentic, because people can smell that a mile away, they don't like it. Well, I've, I've never thankfully had a guest on where people have said, boy, that sounded fake, Ted, because that would be really bad. Because you want to give, you want to give across that authenticity, because how else are people going to be buying into what you're saying? or what you're representing, or what, you're, what message you're trying to get across, if they don't hear truth, vulnerability, and authenticity in what you're saying. Very, very true. So you spoke around the world, right? You're, you're working on all of that, and appreciation, marketing, and gratitude. So I wanna go back to that, because I, I, you're right, a lot of people say, they'll speak it, maybe say, I'm grateful, and we talk about it on the show all the time. A lot of people don't say it out loud to the right people. Uh, they don't express their gratitude to people. And I'm a big believer in, you know, if you want to have your prayer, your meditation, want to be grateful uh, to whatever your higher power is or wherever you're at, that's one thing, but not speaking it out loud to the people who are making a difference in your life, who have made a difference in your life, uh, in business, pro professionally and personally, I think is something that we fall short of. So talk about that. Talk about your how appreciation marketing you made it into pretty much an entire business. This is your world right now. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And you know, like I said before, it, it seems common sense, it's just not common practice. So I'm big on time blocking and being intentional with it. So you have a list of influencers, you have people in your life that you're not gonna let out of your life because they've helped make a difference in your life. And even if they don't stay in touch with you, I think it's important to make sure that you find a way to stay in touch with them. And I have a lot of those types of people in my life. And, you know, when we speak to, we were talking about before, and you were just saying, you know, Curtis, when we talk on the show, it's not as much about what you do, it's really about who you are as a person. And that's, you took the words right, that's exactly what we say, it's not what you do, it's who you are that's the most important and right. how you show up. And see, in the business world, you know, you generate a lead by what you do. Right. However, you earn a referral by who you are. Just explain that, go into okay. detail. Okay. So you don't want to be Ted the mortgage guy. Because that means there's mortgage guys all over the place. Correct. You want to be Ted, my guy. And right. so when you're referred as my guy, my plumber, my electrician, then it's a whole different level because then they're not even going to all these other 
let's say, try to get quotes or right. rates and that. They just know that you're going to take care of them. That's correct. And so there's a lot behind it. It's not just, again, it's not your occupation. It's not what you do. It's who you are and how people perceive you. A lot of it's perception. And if you're not putting out the right message there, if you're not engaging with them on a, in a level where they feel that authenticity, that truth, then you're missing out. If you're just another name in a Rolodex, I'm dating myself, uh, another name in the phone, uh, and they don't think of you first, you're not top of mind, you're That's also true. missing out. That's right. Um, so how, why gratitude though? Why is that important in the whole process and the formula? Having an attitude of gratitude and, and just, just, you know, Oprah Winfrey, I love what she says, and Maya Angelou might have been the original one that said it, it says, appreciate what you have and you'll end up having more. Right. And so what is it that you want more of? You want more love? Show more appreciation in that area. You want more business? Show appreciation for the business that you're getting. Whether you get a contract signed or not, let's say I know that we have a lot of real estate agents in our world, right? We do. And so whether you get a contract or not, whether you sign that buyer's uh, agreement or a listing agreement, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you reward the behavior. So behavior re rewarded is behavior repeated. So making sure that you are sending, uh, and, and I would like to say, send a gift to their to their office, you know, or something. Make a bit box of brownies or some cookies or cupcakes or something like that. And say thank you, and they say, who did that? Right. No, you know, I just had something kind of pop in my head, and I wanted to share this because you're saying um, being authentic and being genuine and that not not. <laughs> so when I speak in a train, we have chapter five of our book is called Chocolate Frosted Dog Crap. Okay. Okay. And, I love that title. Yes. I can't and, wait to hear what that's about. So t I'll give you an example. So, Ted, it's your birthday. When's your birthday, by the way? October fourth. Okay. So October fourth. So it's your birthday, and from a from across the room, you see Curtis, and he has what you think is a piece of chocolate cake with frosting on it, and he brings it over and then sets it right down in front of you. How long until you realize that that's not chocolate cake? Pretty quickly if right it's away. dog crap. Yeah, it smells. <laughs> and it ends up going in the garbage. Right. It's crap, literally, <laughs> right? So it's the same thing. I'm going to put an analogy because there's so many people that will send out like a birthday card and say, hey, Ted, happy birthday. Hope everything's going great with your business and life. And at the bottom put, P.S., the greatest compliment in the world is a warm referral. Oh, by the way, Ted, I'm never too busy for your referrals. So with appreciation marketing, what we say is that don't just ask for the referral, deserve it. Right. Do things that make people want to give you the business. Now, there's a time and a place to ask for the business. Don't get me wrong. I think that Absolutely. there always is a time and a place. There is. And so, especially after that closing, you know, let's say as a real estate agent, you say, now is the time to say, you know, I work primarily on referrals. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you on a monthly or quarterly basis to be able to, uh, to see if you know of anybody looking to buy, sell, or invest? Right. So that's cool, setting the table. But so when I come across with that cake, it's like it becomes disingenuine, it's insincere, it goes in the garbage, it's crap, literally. And what we send is like sending out poop again. <laughs> I need to hashtag poopaganda. <laughs> poopaganda. So, and you know, and there's a lot of people that do that. Like a holiday card where business cards just fall right out of it. Like I'm going to go pick those up and hand them out at the cocktail party to everybody. Okay. <laughs> Luis, <laughs> what's, what's up, up buddy? buddy? <laughs> nice. Love him. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that's something that, you know, we share and we always get a lot of reaction. Actually, uh, believe it or not, Dan Kennedy, uh, this, this chapter came across his table and he completely bashed us. However, what you need to realize is you put yourself in the consumer, put, put yourself in the other person's shoes. How does it feel when you get something like that? Does it land with a warm and fuzzy or does it feel like they're just trying to get something? Correct. Like I'm not a big fan of the people that are tit for tat. You do this for me, I'll do that for you. And you know, that just, is never a good place to come <laughs> from. There's no I feel a lot like of people like that. Well, so I want to go back to your happy birthday. Yeah. I have a pet peeve on social media. If you just click the button when the thing comes up, do you want to wish him a happy birthday? And it looks like the other 45 generic ones. I feel like that's so lazy. Take some time. I always send a private message. It's a little bit more time. I make sure I put their name in it. If I've seen them recently, I, I reference it. It's another minute or two out of your day. But if all you're doing is happy birthday, again, pet peeve. You, no exclam just then put an exclamation point at least, or a smiley face. But I hate seeing people's walls, on, especially on Facebook, 
where they just do, they click the button, happy birthday, and there's 900 happy birthdays and no emotion. And then you wonder why you don't have a relationship. You wonder why you don't have, you're not making any kind of engagement or connection because you're not putting out any effort or energy and people perceive that. I do. If I see somebody who's just said happy birthday and I, I feel like, well, God, thank you for that. Everybody else has done the same thing. Um, yeah, you took a second, but did it really matter? It's the same with gratitude. So if I've reached out and said something, I've complimented you, I've tagged you, and all I get is a thank you back, just to thank nothing. There's no thanks, Ted, for that. There's no there's no uh, emotion in it. There's no real, genuine feeling of gratitude. Then I make a mental note of that and think, mm, okay, maybe that's not the person I thought. Even though I've just tagged them, helped them with their business, tried to help them with anything that they're working on, any project, and they didn't even have the ability to say thank you in a way that was genuine toward me. That's my two cents. That's not necessarily Curtis's. No, I, I'm 100% I'm, I'm on board with that. I don't post on anybody's Facebook walls. And oftentimes what I'll do, and you want to do something outside the box and do something different, well then scroll down a little bit on your Facebook, see whose birthday is tomorrow. Right. And why don't you send out a message saying, I just want to be first in line and wish you a happy birthday. You're going to be lit up with messages tomorrow. So I want to be the first one in line. So something like that, or there's different levels and different levels of connection that you have with people on Facebook. Some are just acquaintances, some are really dear friends of yours. So being strategic and, and intentional about it. I, people say, you know, random acts of kindness. I don't believe in anything. I don't believe in <laughs> random acts of kindness. I believe in, in they're intentional acts of kindness. Right. You, you had a thought, you acted on it, you made it, you did something. Right. So, so where do you nice. take it from there? Like how do, Give some examples if you can, or some things when you're talking about appreciate. Oh, Rosemary says, love Curtis. Love uh, you too. When you're talking up, talking with people, you're trying to help them with their plan. Try maybe even trying to teach them to be intentional in their appreciation. Um, people again, if they don't know, they're going to go for the easiest target. They're going to figure out how to make it easy because they don't understand the value of putting um, some thought into it. So, what are some of the things that businesses can do uh, to thank? the people around them? Well, uh, there's, there's so many different things. And I think, you know, go with your gut. Like there are certain things like um, obviously gifts and, and greeting cards. I'm a big fan of cards and it's part of the reason why I ended up starting my own greeting card company is that it's less than 2%. 15 years ago, homework this day, less than 2% of the mail that we get in our mailbox is personal. Right. right. The rest is what? Junk, spam. And and bills. Bills. <laughs> Junk oh, mail and bills. you're talking about, see, you so, even went to ma real mailbox. Yeah, real I forgot mail. we had a real mailbox. Yes, yes, real mailbox. So that, that in itself, and you want to always kind of think of yourself as, what can I do to stand out uh, from the competition? What can I do differently above and beyond? And obviously cards and gifts and all that kind of stuff. Don't, don't forget like important dates and, and occasions and stuff. So for instance, Facebook, people put their whole lives on Facebook and they're sharing all types of stuff. So. If you have somebody and somebody says, oh, look, um, their dog passed away or something like right. that, you know, that's a family member. That's, you know, and if anybody's ever gone through that, you know, it's, it's tough. So what I would recommend is put a reminder in your system like a year later. The only person, Sorry. only person that's going to remember is that people in that house. So you want to do things like when people lose, lose loved ones and with special occasions and different things is uh, be intentional about trying to remember those type of stuff. And you don't have to think like a million dates in your head, right. you use something like, uh, well, there's yeah. an app that I use called Occasions, it's like 99 cents in the app store that I use. Oh, I haven't use. used that before. Yeah. yeah, so what are some, so you've got the tools, so what is the ultimate goal with the, so you've got a book, mm -hmm. so let's talk about the book. So the book, uh, yeah, we wrote it in 2009, it was a national bestseller, we were very, very happy to use, you know, with our, our previous platform, we had thousands of people that we spoke to on a regular basis all over the country, and, and so we, we moved a ton of books, and you know, we didn't write it because we wanted to make money. We just we wrote it because we just felt that there was a need. And my and Tommy was a writer uh, for ten years for a sports section in Newtown, Connecticut, I believe it was. And so he was a really gifted writer. I started writing a whole bunch of chapters, and then he helped me rewrite it. And we put this book together, and we're very very proud of it. And you know, just like for instance, going back to what you're saying before, chapter two of our book is called "You Should Have Said Thank You." And I'll just give you an example. You ever, like, you're thinking, like, I'm going to a wedding, and what am I going to bring to the wedding? Right. What gift? 
uh, and then you go say, do I go to the registry or do I give them a check? And then you decide on cash, because cash makes more than, you ever done that? I'm sure Stacy has. Okay. <laughs> so, so you go ahead and you put um, money in the envelope and you just splurge, you go above and beyond. And you put extra in there because it's a really good friend of yours, daughter's getting married, let's say. So you go to the reception, you put it in a little box and you walk away uh, and then you're waiting and you're waiting and you don't ever receive a thank you. Now you're wondering, did it get stolen? Did some, yeah, did the cash, what, what happened to the money I gave them? Yeah, this is the way we're really tracking it, right? So then let's say you bump into them uh, you know, a couple months later and say, hey, by the way, did, I just want to make sure that you got it. Oh, yeah, 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 thank you. Thank you so much. That was nice of you. Right. How does that make you feel? Very unappreciated. And then the next time you might have a, something to give to them, maybe there's somebody going to a baby shower, ladies, and you go to the baby shower and you're like, what do I get? You remember back. It's just human nature. Sure. You remember back. So, and... They said behavior reward is behavior repeatable. What would happen if like they were going, the wedding was on a Saturday, on Monday, they're going away on their honeymoon, and Sunday, they give you a quick call. They say, hey, Ted, I just wanted to say, like, just having you at our wedding was a gift enough. The card right. was beautiful. Thank you. And the cash just over the top. I don't have a ton of time. I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Now you're thinking, did I give them enough? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, like, you're totally feeling you feel good. really good. You well, feel really, you feel very appreciated at and, that moment. And that's a personal side. Yeah. How, how often does, do we overlook things on the business side? Business is going, we're, uh, and it's almost like I feel like every business that's growing should almost have a chief appreciation officer. And that's their sole focus. Well, I like job. that. I like that. Chief to, appreciation officer. Yeah. I like that. I, I, like, I, I like that word. And like Donna Dallas, she was here, ambassador of love. Oh, I like that. I mean, you have to, you have to show people love. And sometimes it doesn't have to be ev for every single thing that it has to be over the top love, but something that's intentional, like Curtis said, and something that is personal. It looks like you really meant it. So you, even if you have to force yourself to look like it meant it, trust me, that's gonna that's gonna go so much further than some button you push. Uh, we did we did a LinkedIn experiment. And I did a gratitude, I have a show called Gratitude Tuesday. I try to do uh, anything that I'm grateful for, people I'm grateful. And on LinkedIn, what I did is I tagged the people and I just did a, I did a generic congratulations or you did a wonderful job or thank you for what you did. It means the world to me. And I took time to tag each one, which is not an easy thing to do, but it was an intentional thing that didn't take that much time but it went so far, and we had, I, miss, I must have had 14, 15,000 views on just that two minute LinkedIn specific video. But I went out and thought, how can I thank them and not hit the LinkedIn button that says, congratulations or thank you? Because they provide that for you now. It's very robotic, it's very automatic. You hit the button and you are like everybody else who says, happy birthday, congratulations. Trust me, if you go a little extra, People are going to notice it and they're going to feel it. And that's personal, but in professional too, it goes so far. There's so many choices that everybody has uh, for the business that you offer. So why not go the extra mile and make yourself the exception rather than the rule? Perfect. So, um, all right. So w let's talk about the book. Are we going to do the book, uh, the book thing you talked yeah, about yeah, earlier? Yeah, we can give away. Oh, look, look at that, right? Give away a couple look books? at that. Look at that. Right then. I didn't even tell uh, Eileen to say that. Send the link so for Curtis's we're, book. So we're redoing our, uh, our Amazon presence and stuff currently. However, um, we are on Audible and iTunes. You can listen to it and stuff like that. So let's give away a couple books. What do you let's saying? give away a couple okay. books. So what we're going to do is make a comment below. And I have my phone. And what I'm going to do is in just a few minutes, I'm going to... I'm going to screenshot, and whoever had the last comment, is, I'm going to mail you a book. So send a private message to Ted with the address, and we'll, nice. uh, we'll send out a book. I love so it. So we'll, uh, we'll talk a little more of the book, and then we'll get some comments rolling, and then uh, I will go ahead and, uh, and screenshot in just a couple Wonderful. minutes. All right, so yeah, so let's talk about the book itself. Yeah, so... so Tell us, tell us a little more. That's the book. There it is, right there. Appreciate I tagged it. How to Achieve Greatness Through Gratitude. So... You know, there's a bunch of different chapters in here. One of them that I talk about a lot is uh, chapter four. It's called The Seven Deadly Creatures. Dead, deadly Creatures to Avoid Becoming. 
and we have the sucker and the whiner and the puker. And the reason we make <laughs> the reason we, we make uh, fun of all these is because <laughs> I was every single one of them. And I really try to not revert back into them. I was the guy that went to the networking event that just threw up all over you. Oh, and just yeah. and you would never accept my phone call in the beginning. And I just and then after a little while I realized you know, when you go to a networking event, be interested. Don't be interesting. Correct. You know, be interested in them. And, and I have the little three-quarter rule. Make them talk three-quarters of the time. Ask them about them. And outside of business and outside of like connect with them on a different level, like you do this all the time. So that's what's it's so natural I know for it's, you. But it's, it's not people, it's talk. not natural for them. So that's really what our book is about is like, attraction marking you know you show appreciation and gratitude and getting back without anything in return so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to screenshot right now okay Eileen Winfrey she won the book yay Eileen Winfrey Eileen so she send her a, a send Ted a uh... I'll hand deliver it to you Eileen okay, you will? Okay, I'll perfect. hand deliver perfect. it I'll make you come and buy me a drink we're no, gonna I'm do kidding. another giveaway in just a little bit <laughs> um, I love that though you're right I think that um, when you're talking, when you are at a networking event, Billy, what's up, buddy? When you're at a networking event, people are, they get nervous. They don't know what to do. I love the puker. That's good. Because you can feel it. You feel like you want to shower afterward. And they've spent so much time talking about themselves. They seem disinterested in me. Well, if you're trying to get business, the last thing you want is to come across as you're disinterested in your potential client or customer. And so you can't go to a network meeting. The other ones I hate are the ones that just, they throw out their business cards and it's almost like it's a bullet. I mean, it hits you and that's all they know how to do. Hey, I'm so-and-so and they hand out the business card. Well, that is not how you build a relationship. All that's doing is saying, you're not important for me to get, enough, get to know you enough, but you're important for me if you want to send me some business. Here's my card, next. Um, and it's very, very disingenuous when you do that at networking events. I avoid those people at all costs. And guess what? If you're one of those people, people are avoiding you. They might not be telling you that, but they don't want to spend time with you. And the next time they see you, it's like you're a mortician. Uh, they don't want to be around you. Trust me. So yeah, that's a very, very important point. Yeah. And we have a bunch of other ones too. Also, Mr. Halitosis. Oh God, I'm so cognizant of that. I have to. I am so particular. And, and you know, just looking, just looking clean, and, and it's like, you know, how many networking events you go to, or you go out to meet people, and they'll just like last minute throw on like a coat or this or that, and it's just covered with like dog hair. Or cat I have hair seen that this. before. You know, it, but perception. It's just, and I know it would be wonderful people. Just take a second and just kind of take a look. So it's just making sure that, uh, so that that in that section of the book is really making sure that you're, you're more people are coming to you right and, you know so in our uh, and we also have we added in our last edition because when we wrote in 2009 Facebook was only around for a few years right it was really getting its stride and so we revised it years later and we actually had one called the Facebook ass clown tell me what that means before we <laughs> share all we're gonna have to share his information in a minute because of course I knew we'd go over uh, what does so, that mean because I'm sure know, I'm gonna go oh my god I know that person. we wrote the book as when we were network marketers of course and you see people just like on like every other thing they're just hawking something or just hey you know like look at I just got rid of all these wrinkles and you know you can too or I'm gonna sell this weight loss shake or I'm gonna do this you know instead do things that are more interesting with your posts and, and, and have people draw people people in because if you make a post and say I'm looking for three people that want to make an extra thousand dollars a month you know please DM me right PM me whatever it is and you know <laughs> they have you, changed that too. <laughs> private message direct whatever it may be however you know you might get like two or three people say oh yeah please that's awesome probably two or three people that that might respond favorably there's two or three hundred people that just have that little bit of a uh oh you know like next time they call me they're gonna try to Oh Sell yeah, here we go. You know, here we go again. More vitamins. Or, and, then, and then also we talk about, you know, of course, politics and religion and things like that. So if you're building a personal brand and part of your brand is controversy and ticking people off, which right. some people's brand is, then yeah, go ahead and keep doing it. If you, if you, you post something positive about Donald Trump and this is all the stuff or post something negative, whether you're pro or against, they could be your feelings. But when you put it out there and you air that laundry, you know, you're gonna have the people that are just gonna say, really? Yes. I, 
and, and they're just they just a little shift in their thinking when it comes to, to you. Doing business with you, especially if this is a brand and a business. If it's your personal page and you don't have business people on it, which I don't believe in, I think everybody's a potential client at some point in time. Yeah, you have to be really, we talk about content a lot. Content and how you come across, perception, even though you think that you're, uh, everybody wants to hear what you have to say, they don't. I'm just telling you, I hate to break it to you. Uh, I'm glad that you felt better about it, but the people that you've driven away with some of that stuff, the people that you have driven away with all of your hardcore marketing, that's not where you wanna be unless that's what your brand is. So God bless you if you wanna be Jerry Springer or something like that. Uh, but yeah, make sure every time you do a post, people watch and they pay attention and they will absolutely judge you or decide whether or not they're gonna do business with you or want a relationship with you based on your posts a lot of times. And, the, and one of them we call the vulture. Now how often do you have somebody that wants to meet up with you and they have an ulterior motive? So they don't they don't come across it right away and then with the vulture, you know, and then they swoop in, okay, now's my opportunity or something. And and you know, I and we were just talking on, on the walk over here about a mutual friend that we have and we, and we have a lot of love and respect for him and that's Aaron Luden. Yep, right? Aaron Luden. And so he's helped both of us in our careers. 100%. Big, big time. And so I'll just share a quick little story about him is that I met him, I was speaking at an office, he was there as well and he's like, let's meet up. So we met up for at Panera Bread and we, we get to know each other a little bit. Young, young guy at the time. I mean, I'm a few years older than he was. He was in his early 20s. And he goes, who do you want to meet? I said, real estate brokers are great. I love getting in front and speaking to real estate agents and stuff. And I said, the, the message and the brand, it goes along well. He goes, okay. And he pulls out his phone and does a, at least 10 video introductions. Holds up my book and says, hey, I just want to introduce you to my new That's friend, fair. Curtis. And uh, he just, well, I never had to do another cold call. I came down here, I was calling brokers. I didn't know anybody. So right. I just, and then I, I I thought Peggy Brock allowed me into her office and then I met Peggy. Aaron there and then and then everything started from there and yep. it was just uh, and he's always trying to find ways to add additional and more value and he's I don't think he's ever asked for he's anything one of the, from me. in my opinion <laughs> he's, he's the most selfless connector I've ever met I mean every time he introduces me to somebody there he's not there's nothing to gain from that but I love that he doesn't even think like that yeah. he just wants people to connect and honestly, you and I both know this for being around for a while. Uh, when you plant those seeds and you do that connection, God, the universe, whatever your beliefs are, Thank it's you. gonna come back to you a hundredfold. Many, many, many. Times. All right, so we're gonna share all of Curtis's contact information, how you can get the book, mm -hmm. uh, how you can reach out to him, how you can learn more about appreciation marketing um, after we po when we post the show. So any parting words of wisdom uh, for them before we head out? I would say that if this is something that that interests you to, to be, because we always have a different level. We always have another level that we can be. You know, wherever you're at, you're like, I know that I can be more appreciative. And so uh, I reread the book, The One Thing, not too long ago from Gary Keller. And he's like, what is the one thing that you can do today that makes everything irrelevant or easier? And he's big, big in there about time blocking. So one of the things that I would recommend is that taking a couple of, of, of maybe 20 minute blocks a week and say, I'm shut, this is my you know, gratitude or appreciation marketing um, time or something that you're going to be intentional about reaching out and showing appreciation and gratitude and not letting things fall through the cracks. Right. So what I do a lot of times is like, we're all on the run, sometimes I have a few minutes and I'm on Facebook and I'm scrolling through news feeds and right. I see something, I'll, I'll screenshot it. And then I'll remember to make sure that I go I do back the same, through. Exact same thing. So that's just like a couple little things. That's just awesome. be an intentional time block and be an intentional with it. Thank you. Thanks, Curtis, for being on. Thanks for my gifts. I got a beautiful watch. <laughs> yes. See, it's that way. Um, but you've been a joy. Thank you so much. So again, reach out to Curtis. I'll give you all the contact information later. We love you guys. Have a great, safe weekend. Super Bowl weekend. I don't know. I don't know. We even know what that means, but I hope your team wins. <laughs> <laughs>